we're back. So right now we have three undefeated players at 3-0. Uh, we're going to be featuring two of them, uh, the Bergen and Apple Chip. So two people we've already seen on camera. Kind of two experts of their craft. I think we're going to go down to the deck list before we match. Just run down of what's Yeah, we see this sort of destruction mid-range deck. Uh, you mentioned, uh, Stormguard, that there's some differences from last week. So can you go over some of the differences maybe in terms of metagame development and what the deck's kind of trying to accomplish yeah. here? So as we mentioned earlier, uh, they, or, uh, Apple Chips is presently packing three copies of the Massacre, most likely. Um, for the Unleash decks, just to have a stop check, but then just in case something's wrong. Um, other than that, the deck is very similar. You've got you mostly hero synergy, right? Oh, and of course, you're cutting back on Sil Stronghold, um, which can, as you mentioned earlier, Wolf, when you're having a bunch of spot removal, especially for units, it's not very good when your opponent is flooding the board with a horde of other than that, it's a very similar setup to what they have last week. You've got a lot of heroes, um, incidental hero synergy with greater plans and Vikram's bomb, and then a sacrifice sub to just grind out the late game between Rat King, Devourer, Zito, and so forth. So just a lot of very strong, good value units. Um, the Apple Chips is amazing at piloting these uh, three factors decks. So uh, I'd be really interested to see how they manage all of this, uh, how they manage the units, uh, how they manage the units. So we were talking a bit earlier about um, Canada's mono justice um, power base, right? And how the presence of like some conclave, the tomes make it difficult for an aggressive deck to perhaps um, flip, like, uh, to, there is certainly a high deck building cost for any sort of aggressive deck because of this uh, power setup. In what do you think about uh, Apple Chips' power base? Uh, the way that they've set it up with tomes, conclave? Yeah, so by playing all tomes and no seats, then you're able to play this greater plans conclave sort of base, so you don't. You already know, and you're building your curve such that you're not really anticipating being able to have undepleted power all the time due to having 12 tomes. So just half of your power coming into play depleted, like you keep a two power hand, they might just all be depleted, you have someone from the call to hit. I think overall it's a pretty good structure um, that you're probably able to do whatever you want on time with power base. So I like it a lot. Absolutely. And then on the other side of things, we have the Brigand playing... Uh, FJP control, um, really, I think it's sort of like a base who deck. I think you have to be if you're running stuff like uh, Channel the Tempest and Stormhawk fighting, but splashing the um, fire for Barbarian Gorillas, which is very effective, um, rel essentially a uh, relic attachment interaction, um, which can prove to be really annoying. For instance, say, like Gift of the Auric Bank. Which we saw put to great effect last time, right? Even if you're able to deal with the units, the gift still is able to pump up relic weapons, other units to points that you might not be able to effectively deal with them. So having the gorillas as this sort of like splash um, is very good. And the on the other side of things, we have elemental. Though I don't believe um, Sil Stronghold is extremely popular today, as we saw. Uh, well, as we saw in the. Uh, last round between Boomerang Guy and the Burgun. Uh, so Stronghold can turn any individual unit into a threat, especially against this. And when you don't have as much spot removal, as we can see, we have the Orc Mix, Display of Survival at fast speed, but um, everything else is at slow speed with the Relic Weapons. You really want this site to be especially damaged. So you definitely want to get it off the board. On that's why it's worthwhile to play the Furies, even if Stronghold isn't that popularly played, just because of how effective it is against you. We're also seeing how important this four health breakpoint is. Um, so previously, one of the big downsides of Fury is that it doesn't hit cards like, well, Magna Ventress. But now that Magna Ventress has been hit to uh, for nerf to four health, Fury can hit it and 
a lot of removal revolves around this triple lunar claw, searing fist, and so on and so on. So, fantastic call for the Broken here. I think it could really go either way, um, but it's definitely up to Apple Chips to set pace in this matchup, as it usually is when you have unit based mid mid ish range against. Yeah, my uh, my my favorite part about the Bergen stack is actually the discovered talents. Like I, I always want to play with that card because as inscribed, it's pretty low cost and I, by like you only have to play two channel the tempest. But um, I like that it's able to get uh, cards like the the balanced knowledge. Like that that seems to be the the glue that really holds everything together. Like that's a big pull ahead mechanic. Absolutely, balanced knowledge has put um. Like, we definitely tested Huru Control back for the Throne Open, and found this knowledge hold a lot of and I expect similar results from in the Open. Uh, unfortunately, with the Bergen's hand set up as is, I believe they took a multi six. we're really seeing how taxing um, the control power base can be in this format. So as we saw last week um, with uh, I'm So Bad piloting uh, JPS Control, Having these ripple influence displays um, can make it. They they are of course extremely powerful cards. That's why you play them, but there is a definite uh, downside of not being able to play them in many many different positions, uh, based off of this uh, expedition. Okay, so this is maybe here. Ooh, excellent. Power off the top. Apple tips exactly just to make sure that they keep hitting these power drops uh to progress uh the control deck might have mold to uh six here but it just takes one sweep for them to claw back all the advantage yeah so one thing that was interesting there was whether or not apple chips want to play turn one zito given that you're it's pretty tough because your third power is Potentially going to come to play depleted. So if you say played turn one conclave to play Zito, then played another conclave, and you end up in a spot where you um, you're not able to play your three on three if you don't draw a non tone power. I think I think given that apple chips is apple chips knows the brigands we of getting face eight this are display and dual display, they can afford. <clears throat> <clears throat> Apologies, chat. Uh, they can afford to wait a bit to before deploying the Cedo, uh, because they do have a little bit of time before the Bergen can actually mount face agents to block. They're actually going to uh, exactly. have two time this turn. It's a little bit of time. Chat, you can't see my face, but it. I, I have no words. Oh, that, that's gonna be commentating. Oh, wait, we're we're back for some. Reason. Oh, we're not back for some reason. Good, good thing I wasn't in like an embarrassing post or something. Uh, okay, the, my, my, the the voice oh, of God's my, just keeping me on my feet. My webcam isn't that good. You can't see my face at super high dev. Uh, definition. It, it's fine. Uh, <coughs> just just imagine my face. Imagine my um, just, hyphen underscore back. hyphen face. Ooh, and see, we're seeing the. <coughs> Super just claw back a bandage here. Would have wanted to snap something like Alina or Fitman perhaps, but I think in this position, especially feeling behind not any of these strong spells due to the. Yeah, e Evelina is really just the best follow up to board clears the. Absolutely. A lot of value. Okay, so in the five drop inscribes, right, I've been. I initially was on Cloud Screen just because the time mid range decks generally have a lot of difficulty dealing with flyers. But now that we've rolled back to uh, sweeper heavy meta with massacres, nothing remains, and so forth, I think I'm gonna be sold. I think it'd be sold. Yeah, Ooh, so no. I mentioned that internally the misplay has been discussing what the best five drop is in Expedition, and I just. 
always say it's evil, you know? Like, like nothing really changes for me. Like, I think the fact that it's inscribed and just, like, once they know you're playing time and then it's, like, hard for them to race sometimes, they have to leave up power, and then you can just play other threats. Like, the cost is just so low and it, like, use the game in, like, really weird ways. So, like, I just want to play evil. Apple Chips putting the screws to, uh, so to speak, to the Birkin here, realizing, okay, they probably don't have another sweeper um given that they've already expended two so i can just dump my hand and try and get them dead and still having some uh reserves just in case there was a third sweeper as well so it's not like they would have been on empty uh so pr pretty good for for apple chips but a, a large part of that just came down to the mulligans but th that's a cost you play when you p play these um three three influence based decks but even given that they're both playing three influence like base decks, I think the way Apple Chips' deck is situated lines up a lot better for their power base than playing your you know, display of survival uh, three faction deck. It, it makes it a little bit harder. And you're playing cards like Stormhall plating, so you definitely need to have a bunch of justice. Yep. You, you need I a lot to come the, together. The but... way that you're, sorry, the way that you're you stretching your power base is just too much. It's too much. And one more note, right? Because so the control decks will care a lot more about the damage from Zelda and Kong mm -hmm. than say the more like mid range person. Because you are the amount that kind of so if you have to rely on a card like Conclave for fixing as any of the plus faction decks in this form have to, then it can't that damage adds up very and could easily caught be the difference between you winning or losing. Mm -hmm. So here, okay, players so... just waiting for the go ahead. But how do you like Apple Chips' hand in this sort of situation? I like Dino Nest. I continue to thoroughly appreciate Dino Nest as a card. But other than that, I do think the hand is a little bit underwhelming. I do quite like the here though, because as we saw from the Burgund's deck list. Um, four is a very important breakpoint for a lot of the move they have. Jubilus Blade, Lunar Elemental Fury, and so forth. Really, it's only the Floric that deals well with these five health units. So certainly, I believe the, Re the Reef is probably going to stick around for quite a bit and get in that chip here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like to, to be able to deal with the Reef, but you kind of need to combo kill it, like maybe a Relic Weapon. Uh, we, we see Apple Chips not being able to deploy a 4 with all these 5s in here. Um, I have an interesting decision as to whether or not you want to play Evelina or Reva, but play Reva, you're able to play the Zito and Contract this turn. So that seems like quite a swing in favor, but just considering all the options here. I like the Reva here as well, also because you know that the Bergen doesn't have um, Double Justice yet. I mean, they could easily go, sorry, not Double Justice, justice Triple Justice uh, for Fall of Spark. Yeah. Mm. So you know that the Reva's probably pretty Oh, and heads up play here. So by playing the Boundless Knowledge, you're able to draw two, but you get another copy of Boundless Knowledge. They're going to lose at the end of the turn, but you just discard to Zito. It turns the Boundless Knowledge pseudo into like a draw three. That's pretty awesome. Excellent play from here. Would not expect anything. So interesting decision for the Burgund here. So they know that the Dino Ness is gonna you know, just keep on churning out units. I think it has one more unit. Or no, it flips this turn. Yep. So just kind of factoring that into their plans, but choosing to gain the face Aegis as a small priority there. Even Lena coming down now, very importantly, out of element. So the Brigand is going to need this uh, all spark very soon. And the, this is this is why Dino Nest is such a powerful card because it gives you units down the line, and like and they just work well, work so well in ten. Yeah, so I think 
if if the brigand's able to survive for long enough, the plan is kind of let me just double elemental fury to set up a board clear that would kill Reva. So with that in mind, I wonder if Apple Chips is gonna hold on to this Rhine arc. It's kind of a tough decision, but I think I think you just gotta hold. Uh, but it's hard when your opponent has six cards in hand. If you if you don't hold though, uh, then you're able to beat a single removal spell like the single. So it's just forcing Brigan to have all spells. They don't. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree. Yeah, P playing playing the run arc. And yeah, so like that, Apple Chips is able to take it down. King four uh, The only other person that might be undefeated is Croge. Croge is three up. I got paired down. Um. So, pretty much. Potentially, most likely, almost definitely. I don't know what I'm supposed to say as, you know, someone that's part of the tournament side or whatever, but it looks like Apple Chips should be making the top eight with that sort of record. Absolutely. Um, um, and then here's the Croge match to see if they're able to join. Okay, so Croge going up against, well, your teammate here. Mm. Uh, I do. Yeah, as, as we mentioned before, the fact that. It's the, Oh, spectral! I don't know. word chat. I'm spectral sure you armor. can. You can figure. Yeah, the spe um, the two cost protection spell doesn't that doesn't line up well against the uh, nothing remains out of Croge's list. I I do feel that Croge probably has the upper hand here, but it's the uh, although this is a lot of power. <laughs> I mean, these problem these elders are putting it work, and I love it. Well, while that is true, you do have this Hojan that has gone off. Potentially a few times, and uh, you get to see some of that Scale Swarm Patrol plus Hojan combo. So you get to help make the Hojan a little bit bigger, and then it goes a little bit back and forward. I, I will say, as much as I do love Scale Swarm Patrol as a card, I am very happy <laughs> that uh, Direwolf Digital decide to nerf it and remove the Inscribe. Otherwise, that card was simply far too flexible, far too strong. It is already very strong as is, um, even post -note. and I would play it five. Yeah, I, I think people underestimated um, how good the Inscribe is in terms of like just allowing you to keep uh, you otherwise wouldn't. Like, it was a good card, but all the other cards in your deck are also good, so just being allowed to not see six card hands is very important. But now it's like a three drop that's just always a three drop, doesn't have the ability to smooth out your power, doesn't combo with itself where you can play one and then you know, inscribe the other. Yeah, I, I, I like the decision there as well to remove inscribe from the. Alright, so we're just uh, digging around for a feature match at this point. Ooh, who do we the have? The same here? feature match. Oh, right. They were in game one course oh storm 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 what are you doing anyway it's okay it's a little bit late for you i oh, think yes, it, makes sense. it is <laughs> but you know we, uh, we we appreciate you i i kind of like this hand from roach here you do you have two pieces for the interaction that most likely i will be able to clean the deal with canan and as you and slowly post you to the on the game it's like Yeah, it's uh, still yeah. a little tough, because the question is, like, where do you go from there? Like, it's not that fantastic, but I do like the Light Hopes are able to kill the Shackles, which is very nice. Okay. Yeah, and, and okay. it looks like uh, this is game three, so just, um, you know, we, we missed one of the games there where Kanata looks like they were able to... So, this one's for some subset of marbles. I won't say all of them. How do you feel about Croge holding onto Lunar Claw here? Uh, I think it's fine. Like, I think you do want, in, especially against a uh, Canada, where you, you most likely will be using it to uh, giving it a strength buff, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I think that holding the Lunar Claw just to make sure that you can kill something uh, from the opposing side of the board. Makes Right, you're not running into a situation where they're going to play like Dino Nest or something, or that's going to 
head and just treating it like uh, a more a more specific slay of sorts while potentially being able to gain some armor if you just leave it around like not having too high aspirations for it. We see the combo with Stormhalt plating though. This one's going to gain a little bit more life. I will say this though. I do... I am very pleased with the existence of Sharp Division as a metagame, specifically against this black. That is hopefully, if Canada can be uh, more powerful here, that would be it. Which is going to be... Well, I mean... A lot of crows is between the shackles, but still very solid. Yeah, the sharp tactician being a really good answer to black book, being able to tussle with it afterward. But probably a mystic shackle. Not a spell. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, Kanana just getting those points while he can. I think we're gonna see a magnet. Probably hold on to the student though. Yeah, like, I, I think I'd hold on to the student while acknowledging that um you might need to use it to get past the alphas. Uh it as no as you mentioned like a key breaking point, and then you you might just need to give the, oh that also works. Soup up the Helena just a smidge so that I can push. I like this decision too. So there's an argument that Canada uh, could have just not played um, Scale Swarm Patrol to play around a nothing room. The problem is you end up starting to fall behind to single point removal spells. So just saying, like, fine, if you have the nothing remains, like, it's a three for two, like, that's fine. Um, yeah, I think you just gotta, you gotta just keep on pressuring Croge while they're, I wouldn't say stumbling, but. While they're not necessarily key. And Helena just proving to still be very strong. Um, the Proge isn't able to play Magna Ventress to halt the assault that much, and it's really going to come down to some Parliament Elders chump blocking to buy more time. Uh, which will most likely be stifled by this sharp tactician. I think I would. I am sort of tempted to go back here just because I want to save sharp tactician for. Play second black book, but I don't I think, think I agree with this. I don't think you have to do anything yet. Like, you might just be able to law me, yeah. Fine, too. Because I think it's that way if they do nothing, then you can sharp tactician the other one attack for lethal, given that they didn't take the opportunity to block. We know that Croge is probably going to play the Magna Ventress on the student just to be able to gain the free armor. Yep. You do. So here, Probably. yeah, I like attacking first, and then I want to say deploying the hair Parliament Elder. I think that yes, you're playing a little bit into the nothing remains unfortunately. I think that would be hard if you if you're looking to just try and close out the game for Crofton. I think I actually like playing sharp tech because I'm the the elder attack attacking, mm -hmm. and then if if a sweeper happens, then you play the parliament elders because then you have two separate threats, and then makes sense as well. It's like okay, fine. Your opponent hasn't shown that they're missing a power yet, so maybe they end up having like storm halt plating, but they would have to have power storm halt plating, and I guess I guess that's the main reason oh. for this. Th this is the best play against storm halt plating. Amanda ends up taking it, taking down that match, leaves Apple Chips as the sole four O, and then uh, Canada being joining Croge as a three one. So still in the thick of it. I think they're both very likely to make top eight. Maybe not a lock. Maybe playing for it next round depends on the number of players. But we'll see if there's any other matches that we can bring you. But I'm still liking this variety. Like I feel like 
last week was very much the even though game ground won with uh with Argent port control or mid-range however you want to put it um i felt like the talk of the town is kind of these xenon and destruction decks and i feel like we're getting a lot more variety this week absolutely i like i think there, there have been complete I personally still do think that the Unleashed deck has the most, but that having said that, there is so much variety, a lot of viable strategies in this metagame. I can't wait to see how it falls this week. Yeah, it should all be fun. Also, matching Pokemon modes. Yay. Yeah. Go us. <laughs> All right, so we do got another match. So we've got Boomerang Guy, who we've seen on camera before. Against... I'll have to wait for the... Let me check Battle Thought. Um, Nominous, I believe. Nominous? Yeah, Nominous and Boomerang Guy are the only other so far. So yeah, both it looks to be a mirror true. match of sorts. The site coming down, able to kill the. I don't even know. I forget what the two drop only. Tinker Unionist. Yeah, that. I only know it because I'm. I don't like it. Like, you're, you're saying I, I don't play oh. these cards? Okay. I, um, I, I, yeah. I agree. Tinker Unionist has actually to me just because as it, it's two drop it blocks flunk um it also with the taunt it also ends up eating say your dino nest mm -hmm. um the one ones that get spat out which is in against some hands the late game you just spit out the war cry of course also works well very well oh wow and that's what we're gonna see here with that lunar claw on one just being able to enable the uh, the unleash on the seven seven. Let's tussle. We must finish in time. Man, and that's so good because if if they all attack, oh, well, first the opponent probably loses, but second, your next card is also going to be really good. The war cry, the war cry from both unionist and working in tandem. Ah. Uh. Still joining the fray, but also there's nothing remains. Like it all be too little, too late, and we, we don't. I don't recall what the lunar claw did. If it's locking down, maybe a nothing. But either way, Nominus packing it in. Boomerang guy with a win. And that right. that marks the end of the round. So apple chips, the the stole four zero. But we have some spicy win in an action next round. Uh, so. Don't go away, collect your beverages, use the facilities, and join us for the last round of challenge number eight.